So welcome to all of you, Shiksha 360. And today, basically, we will start our revision session second, part two. And that is basically a revision of chapter number two, three, four. We will not try to discuss every part, but we will try to discuss overall main main parts or main main points so that you are able to understand the question in the examination. If they will ask from this topic, clear chapter number two regarding the money and supply curve. Chapter number three is money supply. Sorry, demand and supply curve. Clear chapter number two is demand and supply curve. Chapter number three is money supply. And chapter number four is theories of interest. So let's start with our chapter number two, that is supply and demand curve. Clear supply and demand curve. Clear. So let's discuss one by one what it says that. So basically the law of supply and demand, clear initially the law of supply and demand, basically it is a theory that explains clear what it explains the law of demand and supply, basically interaction between the seller of a resource, basically that between the seller and the buyer, clear basically it explains the interaction between the seller and the buyer for that resource, clear. The theory defines what effect the relationship between the availability of a particular product and the desire or demand for that product. Clear, basically what it defines, what this theory defines, basically the relationship, clear, that is availability of a particular product and the desire or demand basically for that product has on its price, clear, on its price, clear. Generally, what will happen if there is a low price? So there is a more demand, clear. So there is a more demand if there is a more demand. And if there is a high price, there is a less demand clear. There is a less demand clear. This is the main theory basically going between them clear. So the relationship that the generally low supply and high demand increases price and vice versa clear. What is the meaning of that? There is a low demand or low supply, sorry, low supply, less supply. We can say it like in the time of the COVID, there is a less supply of the sanitizer and there is a more demand. So it lets to the rise in price, clear? It lets to the rise in price. And vice versa, clear? If there is a more supply, less demand, more supply, less demand. So it lets to the decrease in price, clear? It lets to the decrease in price. Okay, so it depends upon case to case what they are asking here. Next one is, what is demand curve or the demand schedule, clear? Very, very important, clear? This point is very, very important. Please remember this point. What is demand curve or demand schedule? Clear, basically, what is demand curve or demand schedule? The relationship that exists between the price and the quantity bought. Clear, the relationship basically that exists between the price and the quantity bought. It is called as the demand schedule or the demand curve. Clear, the relationship that exists between the price and the quantity bought. Clear, price, quantity bought. That is basically known as the demand schedule and demand curve. Clear. Definitely, you will get this type of question in the examination. And that is straightforward question. Clear. What is demand schedule? What is our relation? Basically, under which term the relationship between them is under the demand schedule? That is the relationship between the price and the quantity bought. Clear. It's called the demand schedule or the demand curve. Demand curve, it is a graph showing how the demand for a commodity basically or service varies with the change in price. Clear. Demand curve. What is demand curve? Basically, it is a graph showing that how the demand for a commodity or the service varies with the changes in its price clear you are just able to keep this picture in your mind clear not you are able to remember the definition at the time of examination just keep these pictures in your mind so that you are able to answer the question clear that is on one side it is a price on the other side it is the quantity clear as the price is going to rise clear as the price is going to rise the demand is like this one that it means that the quantity is going to rise clear the quantity is going to rise clear that is basically demand curve and that is demand that curve is basically downward sloping clear that curve is downward sloping. okay that curve is also downward sloping clear so quantity and price are inversely related clear under the demand schedule and the demand curve quantity and price are inversely related second one is law of demand demand downward or sloping one when the price of a commodity increases, clear, when the price of the commodity increases, basically when other things remain constant, buyers tend to buy less of that commodity, clear, because they want to buy any other thing, clear, because they want to now not able to pay more money on that. Similarly, when the price is lower, 
other things being constant quantity demanded increases clear so market demand curve this market demand curve basically obey the law of downward sloping demand a downward sloping demand curve basically relates quantity demanded to the price clear quantity demanded to the price okay now move to the next point here what are the factors influences the demand curve clear very very important what are the factors influences the demand curve this one is also one of the one mark question taste and preferences of the consumer income level of the people change in price of the related goods the number of consumer in the market that is the size of the market and the advertisement okay we have already discussed all these points in the session when we will discuss the theory portion clear in detail just here for the revision purpose i am discussing it consumer expectation basically with regard to the future prices clear these are the factor influences the demand curve next one is the supply curve clear next one is the supply curve first of all i will draw here supply curve so basically supply curve what it relates that clear supply curve like here there is price here there is quantity so as the price is rising clear as the price is rising basically that is with respect to a supplier they will supply more goods clear they will supply more goods clear because they will earn more clear because they will earn more clear? like we can say that like this this is the supply curve clear and the relation between is them is directly clear okay this is a supply curve so supply curve or the supply should be basically it is a for a commodity shows the relationship between its market price and the amount of the commodity clear and the amount of the commodity those producer is willing to produce and sell clear those producer is willing to produce and sell and other things being constant clear supply increases or decreases when it increases supply when it increases basically when the amount supply increases at each market price clear when the amount supply increases at each market price clear if there is a market price of the good is increased then the supply is also increased clear and if the market price of the good is decreased then the supply of the also decreases clear that is supply schedule or the supply curve now what are the factors that influence the supply curve are clear now what are the factors that influence the supply curve are clear so now let's discuss regarding that also first one here that is cost of production second one is basically price of input and technology advances if the raw material cost is to be rise so then it also leads to the rise in the price of the good third one is basically government policies fourth one is price of related goods or we can say that complementary goods like basically toothpaste of two different companies related goods special factors like weather influence on farming and agro industry clear that all are comes to be under the factors that influence the supply curve clear now next thing which we have to understand here that is equilibrium clear that is equilibrium so demand and supply equilibrium clear so the result of the interaction clear this one is the supply curve this one is the demand curve very very important that is surplus and shortage that is very very important what they have written here clear so the result equilibrium demand and supply equilibrium clear the result of the interaction between the consumers and producers in a competitive market clear the result of the interaction between the consumer and producers in a competitive market basically determine the supply and demand curve demand equilibrium clear determine the supply and demand equilibrium that is price and quantity so what is the meaning of that basically market forces tend to drop the price clear basically market forces basically tend to drop the price if the quantity supplied exceeds then the quantity demanded clear basically when there is more supply of the quantity in the market than the demand clear so what will happen there is a decrease in the price clear there is a decrease in the price because the continuously because the stock continuously piling up clear and they want to reduce their stock so how they can reduce their stock basically they can reduce the price so that people can buy more and price rise clear basically when the price is rise if the quantity demanded exceeds then the quantity supplied clear so this movement continues until there are no more changes and the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied clear when the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied that is the case of equilibrium clear that is the case of equilibrium the result is market equilibrium clear that is the case of the equilibrium so now the supply and demand equilibrium basically in the diagram given below you can see the supply and demand equilibrium basically this one is 
so here as the supply is more this one is the demand clear we can say that with the respect refer to this one okay so above that clear above the equilibrium basically there is more supply and there is less demand clear there is a less demand clear that is the surplus and here basically be below the equilibrium point clear below the equilibrium point basically there is more demand and there is less supply clear this is the supply there is more demand less supply clear so this is the phase of the shortage clear this is the phase of the shortage clear in the examination you will get these types of question very frequently clear so please remember all these points now move to the next question that is why is the equilibrium price so basically now let's discuss so at the higher price at the higher price basically there would be more quantity supplied than the demanded so that the seller would have to lower his price to sell his goods clear and if the seller raises their price to high clear and if the seller basically seller raises their price to high so basically there is no buyer in the market so if the seller raises their price to high where the demand is less than what they have to be offer then they will be have to surplus so that will force them to lower their price until they can sell their entire supply clear until they sell their entire supply clear that is basically they are regarding discussing the same thing here what we have discussed now okay now next one this one is important clear now next one this one is important i will provide you the notes also clear so that you can go through them first one is basically how an increase in demand affects the market equilibrium clear how an increase in demand basically affects the market equilibrium clear so here what they have given this is the price this is the quantity demanded clear now what they will happen this is the quantity supplied this is the quantity demanded clear now quantity demanded is going to increase clear quantity demanded is going to increase so equilibrium will shift little bit upwards clear so in the above graph this one we can see that there is an increase or upward shift in the demand curve from d1 to d2 this one is d1 this one is d2 so this increase can be because of some factors so the result of this increase is, is in demand while supply remains constant clear this one is supply curve remains constant there is increase in the demand clear and what it leads to the basically is that the supply and demand curve equilibrium shifts from p1 to p2 clear there is an increase in the price and also in the increase in the quantity clear and the quantity demand demanded and supplied also increases from q1 to q2 clear q1 to q2 this is the how an increase in demand basically affects the market equilibrium that is it will increase clear it will increase that the equilibrium now move to the next point how and decrease in demand clear how and decrease in demand clear earlier there will increase in demand now there will decrease in demand clear so they will shift the equilibrium towards the left clear they will shift the equilibrium towards the left this type of question you will get they will shift the equilibrium towards the right okay now an increase in the supply now next case here arises basically hope it is clear to all of you now third case is that is how an increase in supply affects the market equilibrium clear this one now is the price this one is a supply one this one is a supply two clear now increase in the supply this is the demand which is to be fixed clear so in this graph we can see that there is an upward or increase or upward shift in the supply curve from s1 to s2 clear this increase can occur because of a number of factors the result of this increase in supply basically while demand remains constant is that the supply and demand curve equilibrium shifts from price p1 to p2 clear this one is p1 from p2 this one is k1 to clear and quantity demanded and supplied increases basically from k1 to k2 this one is clear so here basically when there is increase in supply after the market equilibrium basically it shifts towards the right clear towards the right what equilibrium clear it shifts towards the right the equilibrium same in the case of the decrease it will shift towards the left clear it will shift towards the left i will provide you all these points in the group clear now next chapter is that is money supply clear now next topic that is money supply and inflation money supply and inflation clear so what is money this one is also very very important clear many times they will ask question from this point also clear that is basically regarding the money supply and their characteristics clear so what is money supply basically money is anything which perform the following four functions clear how many function that can be performed by the money that is four functions here they are medium of exchange clear money is basically medium of exchange a measure of value 
store of value over time and the standard for deferred payments clear and the standard for deferred payment so basically money is medium of exchange clear money is a medium of exchange measure of value store of value over time and the standard for deferred payments clear standard for deferred payments the supply of money refers to the stock of money clear the supply of money what it refers basically the supply of money basically it refers to the stock of money in circulation in the economy clear the supply of money basically it refers to the stock of money in circulation in the economy at a given point of time clear the supply of money basically refers to the stock of money in circulation in the economy basically at a given point of time and this is partially exogenous and partially endogenous clear that is decided by the government and the rb clear this is partially exogenous and partially endogenous clear just you have to remember that clear what is supply of money it refers to the stock of money basically in circulation in the economy at a given point of time now there are basically some different types of money m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 clear definitely you will get from this point either case study or one or two mark question clear definitely you will get questions from that now discuss on the basis on these things so basically the total stock of money in circulation among the public at a particular point of time it is called as the money supply the measure of money supply in india basically are classified into four categories these are m1 m2 m3 m4 along with m0 clear so the classification was introduced in the april 1977 by the sub bank of india so what is m0 m0 it is known as reserve money clear sometime directly you will get this type of question m0 it is to be known as m1 it is to be known as m2 it is known as m3 m4 clear so what is the name of these monies clear so m0 that is reserve money clear it is also known as high powered money clear m0 basically it is reserve money or it is also known as the high powered money high powered money or monetary base base money etc clear m0 what is m0 basically it is equal to the currency in circulation plus bankers deposits with the rb plus other deposits with the rb clear plus other deposits with the rb clear it is the monetary base of the economy clear it is the monetary base of the economy clear that is basically known as the m0 clear that is basically known as the m0 clear all these things you will find under the chapter number 3 clear under the chapter number 3 next one is what is m1 clear now next one which we have to discuss here that is what is m1 clear m1 basically that is also known as the narrow money that is currency with the public plus demand deposit with the banking system that is current account plus saving account clear all these things plus other deposits with the rb clear plus other deposits with the rb that is basically considered to be as the m1 or money narrow money m2 is basically m1 plus saving deposits of post office savings banks clear what is m2 basically it includes narrow money plus saving deposits of post office or savings banks clear please remember all these points definitely you will get question from these points clear in the examination third one here that is m2 clear what is m2 m2 is equal to, sorry m2 is equal to we have already discussed what is m3 m3 is equal to m1 clear in that m1 in m2 is also m1 is added in m3 is also m1 is added plus time deposits with the banking system time deposit that is like fixed deposit recurring deposit that is basically considered to be as the time deposits clear m3 is equal to m1 plus time deposits with the banking system clear time deposit with the banking system now last one that is m4 clear m4 is equal to m3 plus all deposits with the post office saving banks clear all deposits with the post office saving bank one thing we have to write it here more excluding nsc clear national saving certificates clear excluding nsc that is national saving certificate clear excluding nsc that is national saving certificate clear that is we have to include under the m4 so now one thing more which is more liquid and which is less liquid clear sometimes basically you will find this type of question also in the examination or while practicing you will find that basically which one is more liquid and which one is less liquid clear so the liquidity basically means how fast an instrument basically can be converted into the cash clear how fast any instrument clear how fast any instrument basically can be converted into the cash that it is basically meaning of the liquidity clear so the liquidity of these measures basically can be m1 is the most liquid second one m2 m3 m4 that is m1 is the most liquid and m4 is the least liquid clear m1 is the most liquid and m4 is the least liquid okay this is the measure of money supply basically used in india clear now next one is basically some few definition first one is what is currency with the public what is demand deposit and what is time deposits clear you will also get one question from these types of thing also 
so currency with the public that is basically currency in circulation that it means that the cash held by the banks next one is demand deposit what is demand deposit that is all liabilities which are payable on demand and they include current deposits demand liabilities portion of the saving bank deposits margins held against lg sorry lc letter of credit bank guarantee balances and od overdraft fixed deposits cash certificates and cumulatives or rds clear all are comes under the demand deposits clear next one is time deposits clear that is which are payable otherwise then on demand clear time deposit that is which are payable otherwise then on demand and they include fixed deposits cash certificates cumulative and recurring deposits time liabilities portion of saving the bank deposits etc clear all these things are to be included under the time deposits clear all these things are to be included under the time deposits now next thing which we have to discuss is that is concept of inflation clear concept of inflation which is the next point we have to discuss the concept of inflation basically refers to a sustained rise in the general price of goods clear the concept of inflation basically refers to a sustained rise in the general price of goods and services in an economy over a period of time clear in an economy basically over a period of time clear i will take only some of the important points from the book clear not all just important important points i will take here okay so over a period of time what is the inflation basically inflation lets to fall in the purchasing power clear earlier basically we will purchase a particular good in the at 10 rupees clear now that we we have to purchase by paying 20 rupees clear that is basically inflation that is lets to the fall in the purchasing power what is the general meaning that is basically there is more money in the hands of the people clear there is more money in the hands of the people so basically the good of 10 rupees clear they even paid 20 rupees clear to purchase that good clear that is basically excess of money in the hands of the people that is basically inflation clear that is basically known as inflation clear and inflation basically means that there is a sustained increase in the price level so the main cause of inflation basically are either excess aggregate demand or economic growth too fast or cost push factors clear or cost push, push factor that is supply side factors clear or cost push factor that is a supply side factors clear that are also the reason behind the inflation clear that are also one of the reasons behind the inflation okay so now what are the causes of the inflation clear very very important definitely you will get one more question demand pull inflation clear demand pull inflation that is basically aggregate demand basically growing faster than the aggregate supply clear that is basically demand is more than the supply clear that is aggregate demand basically growing faster than the aggregate supply clear that is demand pull inflation second one is the cost push inflation clear cost push inflation that is basically it is a type of inflation caused by substantial increase in the cost of production of important goods and services clear where no suitable alternative is av available clear cost push that is basically cost of production that is raw material cost is increased clear it is a type of inflation basically caused by substantial increase in the cost of production of important goods of services where no suitable alternative is available that is cost push inflation third one is devaluation clear devaluation that is basically increasing cost of imported goods and also the boost to domestic demand rising wages that is higher wage increase basically higher wages increase basically forms cost and increase consumer consumer disposable income to spend more clear rising wages if the salary of the employees is going to rise clear basically it lets to the rise in the price of the products clear it lets to the rise in the price of products so if the price of the product is going to rise so basically it lets to the basically we have to pay more clear basically we have to pay more for the purchasing of the products clear next one is expectation of inflation basically if the price is rise basically what we want that is causing worker to demand wage increases and form push forms to push up price clear if the basically we can say that if there is basically inflation is going to rise basically what is the demand that basically we have wanted that our salaries will increase clear our salaries will increase so that we will cap up with the present growing prices clear so that basically we will run our families properly clear with the rising the prices that is basically we want our salaries to be increased clear basically cause workers to demand wage increases and forms to push up prices so please tell fast it is clear or overview regarding the concept of inflation please tell fast now only one thing we have left regarding that basically that is calculate the inflation percentage clear calculate the inflation percentage that we also discussed now calculation the inflation percentage along with their formula so what is the measure of inflation or calculating the inflation basically with the price indexes so inflation can be calculated by using this formula that is price index in the current year minus price index in the base year into 100 upon price index in the base year clear this is the formula for calculating the in inflation that is 
price index basically in the current year minus price index in the base year into 100 upon price index in the base year. Clear? Now let we will take one example like you have to calculate the inflation basically when the price index in the current year is 10 percent is 10 and the price index in the base year is 7 or 6 we can say that this is a current year price index this is in the base year. So please solve the question that is inflation is equal to price index in the current year is 10 in the base year it is to be 6 upon 6 into 100 4 upon 6 into 100 upon 3 into 100 i think 66.66 clear 66.66 clear just you have to calculate in this way if they will ask any question regarding that clear if they will ask any question regarding that now there are some different basically you will i will provide you that but basically what are the different measures clear like cpi fii wpi clear basically there are four important indexes clear important indexes First one is the WPI, that is wholesale price index. Second one is the FII, food inflation index. Third one is the CPI, that is consumer price index. Clear? Consumer price index basically for the industrial workers, for the agriculture laborers, for the rural laborers. Okay, we have to discuss regarding all these things. Clear? All these things. And one more point under that GDP deflator. GDP deflator. Clear? So, what is GDP deflator? Basically, it is also call the implicit price deflator clear that is a measure of the inflation clear gdp deflator basically how we can calculate nominal nominal gdp upon real gdp into 100 clear nominal gdp upon real gdp into 100 that is basically known as gdp deflator clear that is basically known as gdp deflator now move to the last one that is theories of interest in that we will discuss only one important point that is interest Interest, what is interest? Basically, it is a payment that is made by the borrower for the use of sum of money for a period of time. Clear? What is interest? Basically, it is a payment that is made by the borrower for the use of a sum of money for a period of time. Clear? What are the three elements? Clear? Basically, there are three elements that can be distinguished in interest. First one is basically payment for the risk involved. Clear? First one here, that is payment for the risk involved in making the loan. Second one is basically payment for the trouble involved. Third one is pure interest. Clear? Pure interest, that is a payment for the use of money clear a payment for the use of money that is considered to be as a pure interest clear please remember pure interest that is a payment to be paid for the use of the money and here basically in the theories of interest basically that is given by jm keynes basically in his book that is journal theory of employment interest and money views that the rate of interest clear rate of interest it is a purely monetary phenomena and it is determined by the demand for money and the supply of money clear and it is basically determined by the supply of money and the demand sorry demand for money and the supply of money clear jn keynes theory basically it is known as liquidity preference theory clear lp theory clear you will find that lp theory that is liquidity preference theory it is given by the jm keynes jm keynes it is also known as the founder of how many of you are remember? Founder of macroeconomics, clear macroeconomics. And who is the founder of microeconomics? Micro, micro. Yes, Adam Smith, clear Adam Smith, clear. Good. So now one thing more which we have to discuss at last point is that is what is the relationship between the interest rate and the money demand clear that is the inversely relationship clear inversely relation that is the rate of interest and the bond price are inversely related clear that is money demand curve follows basically from of that the quantity of money demand increases clear that is basically money demanded increases basically when there is less rate of interest clear as we know that basically rb continuously increases the repo rate clear which is basically which leads to the increase in the rise of the interest clear so there will be less demand from the public side clear basically for the money clear so money demand curve basically follows from above that the quantity of money demanded increases with the fall in the rate of interest or with the rise increase in the level of nominal income. Clear? So hence, as per the Keynes, the rate of interest rate is determined by the demand for money. Clear that is liquidity preference and supply of money. Clear that is liquidity preference. Just you have to remember that basically rate of interest and bond price are inversely related. Clear are inversely related here. Okay.
so in this session we have to discuss up to this much point hope it is clear to all of you what we have discussed now we will discuss some more other important points some more questions basically will be provided to you in the evening in the group so that you can do practice clear or for the revision purpose i will share once again all the question of these chapters clear so thanks to all of you for joining this session